Vietnam movement there is the biggest single political movement on the left and it's attracted the largest number of, of new people. What it indicates more than anything else is a big change in the thinking of students. It has yet to mobilize working class support of any significant numbers. The left in Britain had been very fragmented and we argued on the need to have a common agreement on a minimum program, construct an ad hoc committee in order to make this action in Britain part of an international action on the war, you see. Those slogans were the ones that we were going to work on. People had made their sacrifices politically to work with the largest number of people possible for this demonstration. The official BSC leaflet, the official route of the march. The official BSC leaflet. Our success in this demonstration will consist in the numbers that come out, the degree of unity which involves a number of groups whose relations with each other in many cases are not good, uh, unity of, with people who have not taken part in this kind of movement before, the physical cohesion uh, on the march and perhaps most particularly the extent to which we can use this as a launching pad so that the march isn't just the end uh, of activity but we reach people uh, after the march. We don't know what will happen on this demonstration, but it should be much bigger. And it should make people think very seriously in what direction politics is going to go. against American aggression in Vietnam. We will proceed to Trafalgar Square. From there, down Whitehall, and then to Hyde Park Corner. One of the things that worries me most about the way we've been organising for this demonstration is that everybody seems to be talking as if this is our first massive demonstration. It's our third. We had one on October the 22nd in 1967 when we were very shocked by the number of people that came out and we were taken by surprise. And perhaps that excuses the complete lack of organisation we had then. But between then and March, we really had the opportunity to face up to the issues that massive solidarity demonstration posed for us. And yet those issues were never faced up to. On March the 17th, there was a rather chaotic and disorderly battle with the police in Grosvenor Square, followed by massive sit-downs in Oxford Street, for absolutely no political purpose at all, except for getting many times more people arrested in Oxford Street than had been arrested in Grosvenor Square. And now it's our third demonstration, and yet we're still no nearer working out what is a successful demonstration. <laughs> Up to now, the main criteria of success we've had has been numbers. We must count how many people are there, because if it's more than the last time, it's been a successful demonstration. In a sense, what we've tried to do is to recapture the tradition the CND established of massive mobilizations, massive extra-parliamentary opposition, but under more militant slogans than towards more radical politics. The majority of the people in Britain are against the war in Vietnam, but the majority of the people are not prepared to go on demonstrations as yet. And all you need is a little courage. We're just walking in the streets of London. No lives are going to be sacrificed compared to what's happening in Vietnam. It's a very, very modest thing we're asking people to do. Why have we come along? Well, it's a protest against the British involvement in the Vietnam War. And do you think this is a good way of protesting? Yeah, providing it's kept non-violent, yes. Why do you think violence is wrong? Because I think there's no need to have violence in a British society to protest. Uh, how, how do you think this protest becomes effective then? By having a large number of people making a, making a protest. To whom? Through, through, through the public information media to the country as a whole. Who do you expect to do anything as a result of the protest? I don't think I really expect anybody to do anything as a result of the protest. In the last few days, I have become so angered by the attitude of some people in the British Parliament towards the so-called foreign scum that the whole thing has taken on a different colouring for me. I think there'll be tens of thousands of people in London tomorrow from provinces and from all over because living there bored, despairing lives in the dark, gloomy cities of the north, this is the greatest thing since the coronation. I don't 
increase in increased undervalue the effect of the solidarity demonstration in Vietnam itself. People who are engaged in that struggle value expressions of solidarity. They fight better. And secondly, the war can't be stopped here, but it can, to, in some measure, be stopped by the struggles in the United States. All the other movements on Vietnam in the world are, in a sense, movements of solidarity uh, with the anti-Vietnam War movement in the United States, which bears the first position in that struggle. We were marching up the Strand, and as we came near Trafalgar Square, occupying the home of the street, we came to a halt and seemed to wait for a long time. And we had no idea what was going on. Two of us ran up towards the square, and it looked as though the whole square was full of people, a lot of them watching, but also blocked in some way. We then realised that there was a division of the march. Some of the BVSF people were running up and down with loud hailers, shouting for people to go off to Grosvenor Square, and the groups at the head of the march, wanting to go down Whitehall, then began to take up the chant of, keep left, down Whitehall. Police seemed to be interfering and pushing people, if anything, up to the north side, which would have set them off onto Grosvenor Square. The people began to push forward and we got uh, into Whitehall and we saw moving up across Trafalgar Square to the north side and away to Grosvenor Square, something like a thousand or fifteen hundred people running as hard as they could. was that you got 6,000 people who went to the American embassy who recognized that American imperialism was the main enemy. These 6,000 people have come out on a cr critical line despite attempts to divert the march on the wrong roundabout route. Well, I think that going to the square frustrates the movement rather than helps it. Because it shows that here you are in front of the square having a general punch-up with the police and it's got nothing to do with what you're protesting about. Grosvenor Square just means you're going into one big trap and that's it. I mean, you've had it, you know. some random physical violence which ignores the violence which is inherent in our society. The violence in our society is hidden because people are conditioned to it. It's only by violence that you can get somebody to go and work in a factory for eight hours a day doing a job which is absolutely meaningless to him. He knows that if he doesn't do the job he'll starve or be pushed around in life and he, he sees no alternative so he goes on working in his factory. To overthrow that kind of violence, you need your own violence, but it's political. And what you need is to show people that there is a different way of living. And if you can show it to the person in the family and in his community, then you can build them. And it's because the Vietnamese are organized politically that they have this liberating effect on the rest of the world. The fact that they have to fight with arms is secondary to the unity which exists in that country, because they couldn't win that war without that unity. Some of the reasons for choosing this particular march have been because we're aware of the necessity for showing that the demonstration is about something which is part of our lives and not just a distant war with which we feel sympathy. But that is why we chose to pick out British complicity, Whitehall, the Ministry of Defence, CETO, Downing Street and so on. It's far too late now to ask Wilson to associate from US policy in Vietnam. If we'd been strong enough to do that three years ago, it might have had some effect on America. But it's extremely doubtful that Britain would ever have publicly dissociated. 
U.S. shores up the British economy too much for Wilson to be able to do that. government's been delighted that the British left put all its energy and effort into the issue of Vietnam rather than something closer to home. We haven't even managed to make the Vietnam issue very relevant to Britain. People have been talking about how you can't organise a demonstration if it's a militant demonstration. You must let it take its course. One of the most common phrases that came up in the ad hoc committee was, it will happen anyway. And it's this irresponsibility which most wonders about. And I think it can be tied, to some extent, to the era of control of negotiating with the police, of getting a thin line of people marching with their own stewards and the police walking alongside them. But there is another sort of control, the self-control of the people within the society, based on their knowledge of what they're doing, why they're doing it. Once this demonstration is exercising control over itself, you then have the possibility of the demonstration deciding that it will set itself a target which they can achieve. This problem about control of the demonstration from within is tied to whether or not you have a meaningful political campaign leading up to the demonstration, and not just a campaign whose task is to organise people to come down on coaches to march through London. And I'm very worried that what is going to happen after this Sunday is going to be a decline in the anti-war movement in this country, just through frustration and nothing else. With the National Liberation Front and the Vietnamese Revolution. I think we've just done the old procession that we've done for years and years and years, and the meeting at the park was a bit of a fiasco. The loudspeaker arrangements were lousy, you couldn't hear anything. We're in Vietnam! Some people think that what's happened now is an anticlimax, and I don't really think that's what it is. It's more a premature ejaculation. The real victory came much too early for people to realize it. The victory came in the fact that the ruling class was scared silly, that they boarded up all the windows everywhere, that they brought out all their police, and that in the end they had to give us the streets, divert the traffic, and uh, we won. The real problem was that our goals were set much too low. The questions that people who have a revolutionary perspective will be asking are, what happened this Sunday to bring us closer to a different form of activity? We'll have to come up with good answers for next time, because it simply cannot be true that one demonstration leads to another demonstration, and that demonstration will somehow qualitatively change into becoming the revolutionary movement. We have to think now how our activity will bring about the change. We talk in terms of demonstrations as a form of activity that we engage in now, and we talk about sometime in the future when things change. But nobody thinks, how will this demonstration help in the transition from demonstration politics today to revolutionary politics tomorrow? And the only way that I can foresee that happening is that we have to see the demonstrations changing people's consciousness so that they will want to behave and act differently. What is really needed is a long-term process, not just a peak of activity after which everybody subsides by actually carrying out long-term local campaigns which can actually involve people not already within the movement. We're not giving people who previously were not active on the left anything new to do. We're giving them a demonstration three times a year and we're saying if we're in factions join our faction. But we're not changing the content of left activity in a way which will encourage people who've previously been put off the left by just that sort of activity. I think it's really fundamental that if you want to build a movement, if you want to develop power, you do have to have local organising groups and go beyond basic leafleting to things like street theatres, wall newspapers, local demonstrations. It cannot be done just from national committees. It is no good to separate our moral indignation on Vietnam from the fundamental way of life which we have. And this is what a Sunday demonstration does. Society says to you, you have a certain amount of the week free, and in this free time you can do whatever you like. And so you might go to the bingo hall, you might go on a demonstration. As far as society is concerned, it's the same thing, because protest is then quite containable within the system. To take the struggle beyond the stage of protest, we've actually got to begin to change the environment in which we exist.